So I am very pleased. We have Senator Roger Chamberlain, who has been our champion for over six years now. And we are very honored that he is able to join us today. And would you be willing to come up and say a few words? So, I don't know exactly what you want me to share with him particularly, but I, will, I can start with a... How much time do I have? Sure, yep, and I have questions for you if you okay. need them. So, I, just a moment on the past is that uh, who, when we started this, I, some of you know the story, but you know, Rachel and a couple others approached me, what was it, 2013? Yeah. And she met me in, uh, in a bar in Hugo, and she was <laughs> angry. <laughs> she was angry. And I was angry. Uh, <laughs> she was edgy. I didn't know what to do. But uh, it turned out really well. It's been an amazing thing. This whole thing has been driven by parents and advocates who are not professional lobbyists, they're not uh, politicians. And that's where the power comes from. I was at a, an event the other day, and the power is from you. You have the power to make those changes, and it has come from starting with nothing on a napkin. And I use this as an example for people. Well, how can we get things changed? It starts with a meeting in a bar, and a whiskey and an apple. <laughs> so, so Rachel and Heather and Lynn. I ran into Lynn. Uh, where are you, Lynn? Yeah, I ran into her at the at the Marcus Fest one year over here. And uh, I think we had met before, but then she had her own booth out there advocating. And you were a teacher, right? And she had stepped out to do this stuff. It's amazing what's happened. Now, all those years ago, we had nothing, right? And we brought together people, we kept meeting, some good things, some frustrations. It's not a political issue, it's not a partisan issue. We have had people throughout the legislature helping for this cause. So it's not R, it's not B, it's not right, it's not left. Uh, just those little things took, has taken many years to accomplish, but they are important steps, big steps. And as you know, you probably, well, you're all here parents of children with dyslexia, I'm sure, uh, that even getting the smallest thing changed sometimes, you run into these roadblocks. When I started doing this, I didn't know much about it myself, and uh, I was stunned, stunned by some of the stories that you've all run into. We had a great district from South Metro. They actually had this innovative stuff, getting in the classrooms early, leveraging their assets, by trying to identify kids and students with problems. But great. Then they had this process, step one and two and three. And they were in a meeting with all of us. And um, so we said, it's the city and our thinking, we're all thinking, and, okay, you've identified this. So when you get in there, do you, uh, do you recognize dyslexia? Well, yeah, okay, that's a good first step. You understand it's been clinically out there for decades, more than half a century, right? And then we said, well, what happens if they don't go to step, they don't make it here? Well, we go to step two. Well, what happens if, well, we go to step three if they don't have progress. Well, at any point, do you know, would you recognize dyslexia in there and make a change? Well, no, we have our protocol. Wait a minute. You know that it exists, but you're just going to use the same stupid plan yeah. over and over again and take them down the road, even though you know it exists. So there have been frustrations, but great victories. Uh, now, getting Dr. Schulting in that spot was a coup. It was an absolute coup. Thinking of that and someone who, she was in the talk that some of you know, right? And she was working there, and Groves Academy had come to Minnetonka. I give all kinds of credit to Grove, to uh, Minnetonka School District for taking the lead on this. And then, uh, and then, um, I had a meeting with Anoka Hennepin where Mr. Gaskin's child is. Mm -hmm. uh, largest school district in the state. Did I hear him? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and he was in the room, and I don't like to get angry, but <clears throat> he was talking about this stuff, and he kept making excuses. Oh, so he actually hit the table and yelled at him, which he didn't really like. <laughs> I said, you are the leader of the district. Stop making excuses. We didn't give any money to Minnetonka. We didn't give any resources. They just did it. 
Now we can help you out if we can. So frustrations, many, many advances. Dr. Schulten coming along was wonderful. And our, our philosophy the whole time was bottom up, inside out, it's more sustainable. It takes a little longer maybe, but mandates, there's, there are things we can mandate and should at times, but mandates are not permanent, they're not sustainable, and you get pushed back. But you do bottom up, inside out, parents, building an awareness, educating across the state, and that was one of the tasks that the DDMN was doing, reaching across, across the state, we had phone group, uh, we had uh, uh, conference calls, we leveraged uh, reading, uh, the Reading Center in Rochester and uh, Groves Academy, inside out, bottom up, sustainable, awareness, education, balanced with some mandates, some legislation, and some money. So it's been really successful, it has been, people have led this, uh, not me, people have led this, it's been smart, it's been targeted, and look at this room today. This is amazing. This is truly, are you all from, you're not all from the White Bear area, right? No. no. So this is really amazing. This goes back to the districts, and you pressure them, they start to change. Now, another big coup was getting Education Minnesota to offer the courses and offer stuff free. They took a survey for us, we used that in uh, our conversations, we worked with them, <coughs> and then there uh, was it at, um, it was the November teacher conferences, right? That they held uh, workshops. Uh, summer session this summer yeah. and then uh, October and May. Yeah, so great progress has been made. There's more work to be done, but bottom up, inside out, building this stuff into their culture and into their thinking uh, really helps. Now, two, a uh, couple final things on legislation. We, uh, S Senator Colossum and I have been working together on this for a couple few years. He is a school board guy, he's a principal, a, super, a former superintendent, and he worked on the licensing piece. That's not my wheelhouse, so we worked with him for years, and what uh, we're doing this year is trying to get that, um, uh, the in-service training for licensure, right? Uh, and the second piece is uh, higher ed, as uh, the lady mentioned, getting it there. Now, higher ed is a much different, more difficult hill to climb. We don't have as much control. But I finally thought, forget it, I don't care anymore. We're going to pressure them and put it on them until they reform it and do it right. And then they will go back and reform the requirements for the licensure. So uh, several paths at the same time, bottom up, inside out, several paths, a little bit of mandates, um, awareness, education, training for in-service and prep, and then force them to do some things. We weren't gonna offer the screening legislation this year, that's the third piece of legislation we have, but we thought, because we didn't want to get the cart in front of the horse. So, but what the heck, let's push it, let's drive a little bit more. He's got a lot of awareness in the legislature, people are interested in it, they want to do something now, because they want to make sure that you like them, right? <laughs> so we're not gonna give money to uh, companies to uh, subsidize their health, the, the, fitness uh, memberships at some gym. We give money to parents and kids in schools to do this stuff. So three areas, in-service, teacher prep, and screening this year. I've got the screening one, we're having a hearing on the, I think it's the 30th. I think uh, it just changed to the fourth. It did, you saw it? Yeah. Okay, so the fourth. The we'll, put, we'll put it on our Facebook. Okay, uh, so those are the things we're working on this year. Uh, push them, drive them. Yeah, the screening is a difficult thing. We, we don't want to spend $10 billion on this. We have to be smart about it. Dr. Schulte has been putting this stuff together. We already screen kids at the pre-K level. We can integrate that in, add some things, and it can work. We don't have to spend a billion dollars and break the bank. Smart stuff. So this has been very smart, driven by smart people, dedicated people, and they've, done, they've all done an incredible job getting to where we're at. So, it's all for you, about you, and by you, and I'm just a messenger that gets to carry it through the, the lunacy up in St. Thomas. <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. I think that's